I'm Meg Kinnear and I'm the Secretary General of ICSID, which is the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes. And we are the world's leading facility on international investment arbitration, but also conciliation, mediation, and fact-finding. We started this review process in 2016, where we advised members that it was time to modernize and update. And in the course of the review process, we ended up with a working method, essentially, where we would basically draft the rules and where changes could be made. We'd explain what changes could be made and give draft text. And that would be made public and distributed to our member states. And then we would get written comments, we would have an oral consultation with our member states, and then we would go back and go into the next working paper. So over five and a half years, we did six working papers, and every time they got a little bit smaller and a little bit more concise. And by 2022, we had a set of new rules that we felt could get consensus. So we put this to our member states, and in March of 2022, the member states approved. One of the things that I always note is that while it did take a long time, the membership approved by 85% in favor, and nobody voted against these rules, which I think is a very important vote of confidence in the rules and a statement about their legitimacy. So I think the time was well worth it. The new rules uh, are actually a, probably a continuation of the transparency that you saw in the 2006 amendments, where you first had things like non-disputing parties, making awards public, those kinds of issues. So the 2020 rules take those and add on to them. For example, awards will be made public with consent of the parties, but if parties do not consent, we will then extract the legal reasoning. If parties simply don't answer the request to make an award public, it will be deemed consent and then go into the public domain. The rules make clear that decisions and orders will be made public and they can be redacted by the parties, but if there are any disputes about redaction, that will be decided by the tribunal and those will go into the public domain. And I should note something that's very interesting. People always think of awards, but you know, uh, there are so many decisions and orders and they have a lot of what is the law now and the developing law. So just to give you an idea, our last fiscal year, we had about 30 awards issued, more than 400 procedural decisions and orders. So I think it's significant because you're going to be seeing a lot more law available to the public under these rules. We've made a, basically a presumption that hearings will be open to the public unless our other party uh, refuses. We have added several criteria for non-disputing party participation and added a distinct rule on non-disputing treaty party participation. And then to balance it out or to help interpret these rules, we've also put in a definition of what is protected and confidential. So they are, I think, a very balanced set of rules, uh, but it does extend transparency beyond 2006 and I think is the new modern norm. I think USMUNDI's mission to make international arbitration accessible is really a terrific mission and the time was right to have this. I think it's absolutely tremendous and I commend you, you've made a real impact on how we do our research and how we do our work. I think uh, the role of legal tech companies like USMUNDI is extremely important. Obviously, any kind of distribution of these decisions increases access and that in and of itself is really important but it goes beyond just mere access because you have access but to a document in a searchable format and a document that allows you to cross-reference other legal documents and other sources of law so it really goes from just a pure repository which you might think of for example looking at the ICSID website into something that is truly a legal research tool so it's tremendous. Technology is going to play a huge role in investment arbitration and, and all arbitration. You and I have talked about the new ICSID rules. Among the things that we've embedded in the rules is that all filings will be electronic. And we were forced to that in the pandemic, but it's actually worked flawlessly. So that is one aspect of technology. The second aspect is remote hearings. 
And again, our new rules embed the possibility of any hearing being done remotely. And we are seeing parties really wanting to use the remote technology, but interestingly, in particular, wanting to use what we're calling hybrid, where you might have a smaller group on site, for example, the arbitrators and several people from each team, but then larger groups from the team are able to see and participate through the remote technology. Another aspect that sometimes gets lost in this, but I think is really important, is that with the remote technology, we are also able to webcast hearings and we are able to put them on our website. And I've had a number of people, including professors, who say my students actually were able to sit and look at a hearing. And if you want to talk about legitimacy and understanding, there's no better way than to have to actually see this is what it's all about. So I think it's really key. Technology is also playing a really important role in bringing costs down. Obviously, if you can do something with video as opposed to bringing all of your team to a certain location, you're going to save money, you're going to save time, and importantly, you're going to save carbon footprint. So it is a key to going forward, and we have gotten very good at this, especially since 2019, and it's a tool that parties really appreciate. I believe investment arbitration has a future and is very important. And that's obviously shown by any of the numbers where there is a steady increase. But I think it's also shown by a number of the, the studies and the research done. And in particular, there's a very interesting 2019 World Bank report that talks about the cost of unresolved grievances. And just to give you an idea, they have estimated that uh, in 2019, basically the cost of unresolved grievances for developing states was over $100 billion a year. And that's something that we often don't see because we see arbitration, but we don't see what happens if you don't have a way to come to a resolution. And that is investment that either doesn't go to your country or doesn't stay in your country. And that's a really important part of it. And when I look at this, it is not just investment arbitration. It is a whole system that allows you to try to prevent disputes, resolve disputes early, or if that can't be done, resolve disputes later. So I look at it as part of a whole life cycle, but it's absolutely vital to investment climate. And especially now you think about the, the needs are so big. We need climate innovation. We need to address agriculture problems, hunger problems. There is so much need for investment law that I think countries need these tools as much as possible. And investment arbitration is one of them and will be there to assist. Mm -hmm.